I'm, I'm Peter. I'm one of the, the co-founders of the, the Graphhopper company, which um, mainly currently drives the development um, process um, of the Graphhopper ro routing engine. And um, I'm originally a physicist, and all this started with a hobby. Back um, in the 2012, I, I fiddled around with um, routing algorithms and, and used OpenStreetMap as base to, um, to get uh, routing cr across Germany working on my uh, weaker laptop. And, and this all then uh, culminates in yeah, the graphable routing engine, uh, which is now able to process um, uh, hundreds of, of millions of nodes uh, on, on a bigger server in, in memory. And, and serves uh, routing responses within milliseconds. And um, yes, that's all the ba back in, yeah, basically 2012, seven years ago. And um, yeah, I, I think we can start now with um, the presentation. Um, so. Um, today I will talk about the graph routing engine and um, talk about the latest uh, developments uh, of the last, last year and also of the future developments, uh, the new features in 2019 that we hopefully will add. And um, as I already said, I'm, um, I'm Peter, I'm a physicist and a programmer and problem solver and together we people founded the company, Graphhopper company. And 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 yeah that's um, basically it. So we the, the three founders uh, are on top and 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 what is the mission of our company? Just um, to clarify this, so we built we want to build the routing software stack of the future with uh, lots of open source uh, software and utilizing open data like OpenStreetMap, which, um, of course, um, for our commercial services, we we've currently have integrated also TomTom Tom to um, offer other um, possibilities. Um, but we always concentrate on, on this mission and to make this happening and also being sustainable and, and having a sustainable open source project, we have to earn money. And, and But this we will always invest in the open source community and open source software. And, and, um, and also we heavily invest in OpenStreetMap community. We are one of the uh, yeah, gold sponsors since a, week, a few weeks uh, of, of um, OpenStreetMap Foundation which we are very proud of and, and recommend that companies do this. And um, yeah, that's, that's all from um, the advertising. Um, and, and, and I will go back to the Graphable Routing Engine. So the Graphable Routing Engine, as I said, started from a hobby project um, seven years ago. And it is a Java library and web service uh, for, for routing. It does no maps, it does also no geocoding, but it has a web application, demonstration application, uh, where we bundle this together so that you can see how the routing behaves. So the, the routing just calculates um, the distance, um, the time, and also the geometry, and the turn instructions of the route. And it's a fast and memory efficient library that you can also use as a service. So from other languages like, like Ruby, uh, Python, PHP, or whatever, it uh, talks plain uh, HTTP. It uh, works with open data, open street map data, but as I said, also with others. And uh, we, we have several algor al algorithms implemented like Dijkstra, ASTAR, and a few more sophisticated and, and yeah, faster algorithms like landmarks which is mainly A star and contraction hierarchy, CH. Um, we, we, we talk um, from a higher perspective, Dijkstra and A star are, are, are our uh, flexible modes. Then there's the speed mode, which is contraction hierarchy. And, there, and then there's the hybrid mode, which is um, still flexible, 
uh, but fast. And this is a landmark algor algorithm. And we support out of the box um, walking, car, bike, public transit, and a few others like motorcycle and so on. And that's um, how it looked like. So in the background, there's the graph of the maps where you have um, geocoding bundled together with, with maps and routing. And um, in the foreground, there's OpenStreetMap, where we are one of the two um, routing engines. Um, and, and, and yes, that's what it is. And, and now I can show you um, some demo. So this is the route from um, the railway station to the university by foot. And, and you can see um, this green line, the geometry, and also the turn instructions and the elevation data is all coming from uh, the graphable routing engine. But um, converting the address to coordinates and also the visualization of, of the map is uh, done from external services. So you can change the map um, to, to some other stuff. And, um, and, and yes, you can also see the, it's, uh, it's fast and uh, continental size uh, queries are possible within uh, milliseconds. And um, yeah, and of course uh, you can also do batch queries and stuff like this with a local, um, um, installation and yeah that's what I wanted to show now a bit more into the details so how um, are we uh, um, doing algorithms with some kind of um, or how the real world comes into the computer so from junctions the real world to nodes, to graph upper nodes. So this is real world image. Um, and, and as you can see, the open street map is uh, quite similar. It, um, it maps or it, it creates um, the roads based on, on ways. Um, for example, one way goes from here to here. It has several nodes. Here's probably one here's one and here and it had some tags like um, the name but also like the direction the one-way tag and other ways like this here need also some additional nodes to f to create the geom geometry so um, based on this you can say the ways consist of multiple nodes and tags and the relations that's for example for ferries um, based on multiple ways and this is a really powerful way to express things but it's also really generic so for example they um, in OpenStreetMap you you tag houses with ways and you tag everything with ways like also roads but everything else also uh, too and in, in Graphhopper uh, we, we just need edges and nodes and for this, we have to convert the, the OpenStreetMap data into our graph model, into the ma ma mathematical uh, graph. And we, for example, um, before this node was here, um, and, and we do not need um, this node in the routing algorithm, but we still need, we still need this node in the geometry. So we call the red dots the junction nodes or tower nodes, and all the other nodes um, are irrelevant for us except for the geometry. And, and all this we store in the edges, so the geometry, the other tags like names and distance of the, um, of the edge. And, and then we have nodes, um, the junction nodes. And now, even a bit low, more even more le low, low level. So we have two tables basically, like nodes and edges, and then we have a linked list. Um, but this is not really important. But only as you can see, we have a really simplistic storage layout that is um, 
that can be handled in memory, but also on disk and, and uh, through memory mapping, we are also able to run graphable um, routes on, on Android, but also on I, uh, iOS with some uh, converter. And, and this is a really um, interesting uh, way uh, to make it uh, portable. And uh, this is now um, we start a query f somewhere in Berlin and then route to some other point in western of Berlin. And what you see are all edges and I think the green ones um, have a certain speed and the blue ones have a higher speed. And what is now blue is the shortest path or, or this, um, this uh, dark blue color is a uh, shortest path tree. So the shortest path tree starts in, in Berlin and then uh, is targeted uh, towards the destination until it finds the destination and then it can kind of um, go back from this um, node back to the root node and then prints um, the fastest path. Um, it's, yeah, it uses uh, under the hood, it uses the Dijkstra algorithm um, with a goal directed uh, heuristic, which is A star. And it is unidirectional. So it starts really to search until it finds the node. Um, we can also see that you can um, kind of do a reverse search from the destination back to the um, start. And then uh, you have two searches at one time, which is called bidirectional. A star or Dijkstra, and this is something I've um, done for a different area. And what you can see here at the top is bidirectional A star, which uh, visits 25,000 uh, uh, nodes. The unidirectional A star visits 50,000 nodes, so it's roughly half. Um, so it's, it's, it's also, it's really important to understand that the performance or the speed of a, a routing algorithm is more or less directional proportional to, to the um, uh, number of visited nodes. So a bidirectional A star is roughly two times faster than a unidirectional A star. So uh, we have now 20, uh, 25,000 visited nodes. The speed mode, which is contraction hierarchy, as I said uh, before, uh, visits even less nodes. It visits only 600 nodes. And yeah, the nodes are just a bit bigger plotted so that you can actually see them. So that's just an impression um, how really the differences are here. Um, now I'm, I wanted to talk about the features we introduced in the last year and and we'll also then talk about newer features. So we improved the core of uh, Graphhopper so that you're now able to show some path details. Like, um, now it's a bit crushed. Um, the average speed is, um, can be returned for every segment of, of the path or the maximum speed or kind of any information that the graph stores and as I will describe later, we will improve this. We will kind of, it, it will be possible to store any information that OpenStreetMap offers into the graph and then you can print them, for example, in path details, but also not even only this, uh, also you can customize routing based on those properties. And, and, and this is the foundation for this uh, flexible, more flexible mode, how we call this. And also we updated a web framework uh, used in Graphhopper. So before it was Surflet based, now it's using Drop Wizard. And it's um, kind of improvement for developers only, but we think that it's a huge improvement and it was huge work. Like it's the same as with um, better release management where we just can tag a commit and then it will be automatically released uh, on Maven and, and have a zip file and so on. So, uh, and one important thing was that we released the Isochrone API 
which is um, which was before closed source and is now open source, and uh, we <coughs> can actually uh, see this in action. So, what is the isochrone API? If you click uh, somewhere uh, on and define a start location, then with the isochrone API, you get the reachable area from this start location for a certain uh, vehicle mode, like car in this case. So, in, within five minutes, you can reach all the uh, places in the green polygon and the same for 10 minutes for the blue polygon. <clears throat> we also improved our public transit um, uh, algorithm so that it handles uh, better multiple GTFS feeds and um, or it, it now supports to handle multiple uh, GTFS feeds and we have improved also the performance um, for the real-time feature, but in general for the whole uh, public transit routing algorithm. The uh, map matching is also faster. So as you can see in this uh, GIF, it's snapping a list of GPS coordinates onto the road network. And um, you can al we can also see this in action. Um, So what we are doing now, if, we, I click a, if I click the button, the GPS track is sent to the service, and we get then back, um, yeah, the route that it snapped. So um, if I zoom in, you can see the, the black is the GPS track. So we have here two GPS points. And the snapped route is perfectly aligned with the actual road geometry. But not only this, map matching allows you to, um, to return the turn instructions. So if you have a hike trail or a hike event or whatever, then you can send your, um, your route and, and attach turn instructions for others to use. But it can then also, uh, as I described, the path details you can return every information that is stored in Graphhopper uh, back, um, like elevation, like um, average speed, maximum speed, and so forth. Though it's a really uh, sophisticated and, and high, yeah, it's a really interesting thing. For example, if you have trucks and you want to monitor them, if there are speed violations or if they are doing that work correctly, then you can do the, use this tool, but also to, um, yeah, to uh, do the other interesting things. Um, now, regarding the future work. Um, so I told you that we have now improved the core to um, store the properties and this work is continued so that we are so that's possible to create kind of um, vehicle profiles on demand so you can define a vehicle per request and change properties um, directly within a, with a JSON or JAML file or even in um, a scripting language um, this is a highly experimental um, mode, but I would like to uh, present you this um, in the following demo application. So, So yeah, the, the start and the end are uh, disappearing somehow. Um, it doesn't matter. So what we can do now is um, to 
uh, avoid primary roads, so completely restrict the access to this road. And then you can see here this road flips using no primary roads now. Then I have a um, simplistic um, profile for wheelchair. Um, So we have the same no access property and and but now two steps so we don't walk we don't want to go over our steps and we want to avoid cobblestone surface so that looks a bit different and if you and if we just remove one part then it will um, change here it's a small there's a step and this one will be uh, avoided and the same with uh, the cobblestone we have the start of the direct uh, the start of the route will be uh, different if we avoid cobblestones what is the 10 is that just an arbitrary score that you're that's a cost score um, it's it's currently kind of arbitrary um, where we have to um, yeah it's it's relative so so you say this edge has a certain cost and the different edge the specific picked edge like the primary road or whatever gets a 10 high higher cost to traverse or to cross this road and yeah uh, but we will certainly li certainly limit um, those um, cost factors, uh, factors, but currently we have no, uh, not enough experience. And now I'm also showing you um, this thing again, that you can also, of course, exclude the bridges in case of some, I don't know, bridges are broken or to, to, um, to model what will happen if they break and and now I'm coming to show you um, the, the more interesting bits um, or I'm not sure if more is interesting but let's let's say you want to avoid maybe now I'm coming to this factor thing so now let's say we want to avoid the motorway and uh, one means um, there's no avoidance two means um, we avoid it a bit but not everything as you can see and if we put a three here then uh, we avoid everything uh, if you, you can clearly see the impact on the um, travel time so one means 25 minutes, two is four minutes more, and three is even 11 minutes more. And now this, hap this is relative uh, simple with Jumel, uh, or simple to implement, but it gets really interesting um, with scripting support. So we can have the same with scripting, avoid it, and more or less completely block the motorways. Um, because why I think um, scripting support is important, because you cannot really model everything with Jumble, and I think it's, um, yeah, it's not yet clear how we do this or everything. Um, scripting has other issues as well, um, but, but I think it's really impressive to know that this is, uh, Java code, which is then compiled on the server side within, I think, uh, one microsecond or even lower. And then really um, the performance of this generated uh, Java bytecode is equal to native Java bytecode. It's really impressive. You should check um, the, the compiler out. It's a um, Janino compiler. And, and then you can really um, now what we are doing here is evaluate uh, for, I don't know, one million nodes 
all the same things again. So this is also already um, highly um, optimized to make it fast, but it's not yet in its end status. No, no. This this um, algorithm works with the flexible and the hybrid, so with Dijkstra, A star, and landmarks. Contraction hierarchy is not flexible, and there's no. There are papers that make it flexible, but um, out of scope for us, probably. But we will. We have implemented um, more sophisticated stuff, so it's probably only a matter of time. And that that's. Um, yeah. So for the speed mode, we have also now turn cost support. This was um, an issue which is heavily requested, and this is now in master, but it's still under heavy development because it's um, kind of really, really tricky, and really, even in the papers, there are there seems to be some mistakes. So we have taken a different approach, which is unique, uh, kind of unique in, in the world that that we have a node-based graph, not, a, not using a dual graph. Um, but yeah, I don't want to go into the details. It's really sophisticated work that was done from Andreas Bart here. And we also, we all hopefully will have the alternative routes for the speed mode in Graphable that makes you, uh, yeah, currently the alternative routes are really slow and you can't really um, create alternative routes for longer routes than, I don't know, 300, 400 kilometers, which is really ugly. And so we improve this, or hope to improve this with this, and it's already working, but now we have to improve the code and, and the speed to make it production ready. Then we invested over the last few months into a navigation SDK. Um, mainly, we, this is the work of Mapbox, right? They have a really interesting navigation SDK. The problem of the Mapbox SDK is there's a binary blob which is closed source since a few months, which is really ugly. So we took the commit before this merge happened and then, mm, yeah, kind of um, also adapted the navigation SDK uh, to our uh, routing engine and make it everything working. So you can use a completely open source a graphable routing service combined with a completely open source client side yeah, fork Mapbox navigation SDK, which we of course named Graphable Navigation SDK. And um, a demonstration application is also available on Play Store, but it's not, uh, yeah, I wouldn't say it's, it's usable, in, but it's all, it already demonstrates what it can. Um, you have to turn, for example, GPS um, coordinates on before you start the application to avoid issues. And, and there are a couple of things, but it's it's kind of um, we I, I tested in in my car, and and it's quite quite interesting and impressive that uh, we can now have Graphhopper uh, for navigation for car navigation, and and also of course for for um, any customized vehicle, walking, biking, and so on. So, um, yeah, that's that's it. And as you can see, there's lots of progress. And um, yeah, I, I think we are meeting um, at at seven with some OpenStreetMap guys after this. Five. It's at five. Sorry, seventeen. Yeah, <laughs> sorry. I'm yeah at five here maybe. Thank you. And um, yeah, thanks for your attention. <laughs>